Welcome to the creative process of photography. This is part 1.2, which is about prerequisites for the course, um, the essential gear that you'll need to be able to follow along. Um, now, there's a lot of opinions on different types of camera gear, um, but we'll try and go through everything and uh, give you as much information as possible so you can try and make an informed decision on what kind of things you'll need for this course. Now, obviously, the first thing you're going to need is a camera. Now, there's a lot of different kinds of cameras out there now, and there's a very wide price range of cameras. Um, and I will have to say that the, getting into photography is a bit of an investment. Uh, the gear ends up does costing a lot of money in some places, but you can get in uh, quite cheaply to begin with. Um, you probably already have a camera in your cell phone that's already good enough to get started. Some of the things you're going to want to look out for is being able to have manual controls um, so you can adjust things like the aperture or the shutter speed, and that's going to let you experiment a little bit and learn how the different parts of exposure work. So let me kind of just talk about the two main kinds of cameras that you'll probably go out and see in the store. Um, there's DSLRs like this one. This is a Nikon D750. And uh, the key thing that makes this a DSLR is the mirror that's inside it. So if I take off the lens here, inside there you'll see a little mirror uh, that kind of flips up and down whenever you go to take a photo. Um, light is coming in through the lens here, goes into the camera, bounces off of this mirror, and goes up into the prism so you can see through the camera and see what you're taking photos of. Uh, the major other type of camera is like the one that I'm currently shooting on, which is a mirrorless camera. Um, just as the name implies, it's everything this does, but it doesn't have that little mirror in it. Um, so in a DSLR uh, like this one, uh, when you look through the uh, viewfinder, you're seeing directly through the lens. Um, if there's a viewfinder, some mirrorless cameras don't have viewfinders, if there is a viewfinder, it's looking at a little feed directly from the sensor. Um, so the sensor in a mirrorless camera is always on and always working. Um, in a DSLR, the uh, sensor is only working while it's taking a photo or is using a live view on the back of the camera. Um, nowadays, this is less and less of a difference really. Uh, it's just kind of personal preference. Um, I think overall the industry is going to end up starting to go towards mirrorless cameras. Even Nikon just released two big new mirrorless cameras. Um, but that's not really a thing you should be super concerned about right now with your first camera. Um, they're all going to take really good photos. Um, in general, mirrorless cameras sometimes have a little bit more issues with battery. Um, because the sensors are again running all the time and sometimes they can get kind of warm um, and they too tend to be uh, on the flip side a little bit smaller than the DSLR. As you can see this is a pretty big camera. Um, while you can get one smaller than this, uh, mirrorless cameras tend to be a bit smaller overall, um, both the cameras and the lenses. Um, so that's something you can consider if uh, weight is something that's important to you. It might be worthwhile to look into a mirrorless camera. Um, image quality wise, they're both the top of the line stuff is doing great no matter what you choose. Now to dive into mirrorless cameras a little bit further, there's actually quite a few differences between them. Um, there are mirrorless cameras like the one I'm currently shooting on, the Panasonic GX85. Um, it takes different lenses. Uh, just like the DSLR does, the lens can come off of this and you can put a different kind of lens on. Um, some mirrorless cameras, like in my pocket here, uh, the, your cell phone is technically like a mirrorless camera. Um, there's no mirror inside that that uh, sends the image anywhere. Um, when you take a photo, it's just reading right off the sensor that's always running. Um, you can't change the lens on this. You can put a filter on top, but you're not changing the lens. Um, the same would be for point and shoot cameras. Um, there's and bridge cameras, and these are just different types of uh, mirrorless cameras that have the lens on them all the time. If you're looking to research a couple of DSLR cameras, uh, Canon and Nikon are both the biggest industry leaders right now, um, with Pentax making some as well that are really good. Uh, if you're looking into uh, mirrorless, you have quite a few options. Uh, uh, now Nikon, Canon, Sony, Fuji, Olympus, Panasonic, and I believe Pan Pentax still makes them too. Um, all have different mirrorless cameras. There's a wide range to choose from, um, and you can kind of, they all make, they don't, no one makes a bad camera really anymore, uh, so you don't really have to worry about that if you're buying new. Uh, if you're buying used, uh, there's some things you could probably look towards to see if the image quality is good or not, but overall, anything in the past four or five years, it can kind of take a pretty good photo without too much trouble. So in that sense, it's not a bad time to get into photography because there's a lot of really great cameras out there. Uh, now, 
researching cameras is a huge thing and there's it's a big purchase so you really want to make sure you have uh, all the information you can uh, there's a lot of websites out there that can help you uh, research the different types of cameras and see reviews about um, YouTube's a great one and I'll link to both websites and some YouTube channels that go uh, over cameras so you can get an informed decision of what you want uh, if you have a friend who's into photography I highly recommend you go and chat with them and see what they use and what they like it can be really handy to have a friend who has some gear that's similar to yours because you can always uh, if you have issues you can always go ask them for some help or if you both have cameras and different kinds of lenses you can swap lenses up each other to try out different things in the blog text I'll list some recommendations for different types of camera systems that you could look into right now um, but this will be something that constantly changes outside of just digital cameras you can also get into film photography now there's a lot of different ways to do that you can get into a standard DSLR film camera you can get into Polaroid photography or you can even get into something like medium format. Uh, there's whole tons of different things you can do with film photography and we won't get all into that now. Um, to be honest, while it used to be that film was kind of what you wanted to start with to kind of really learn everything, I think it's more handy to start with digital nowadays. That being said, we'll go over different types of film cameras in a later video. Other big part of the puzzle is going to be the computer that you're using to edit your photos. Um, there's both computer hardware and software considerations that you need to take. To be honest, most computers nowadays can handle photo editing just fine. Uh, the only time you might run into issues is when if you're working with like large HDR panoramas, um, you could s sometimes find issues with RAM. Um, so when you're looking for a computer, uh, it might be worthwhile to make sure you get enough RAM in it and check to make sure you have enough hard drive space to be able to save all your photos. And definitely look into getting a backup hard drive. Uh, you should always try and have at least two backups versus your original files. Uh, one, two backups on site, so your original file and a backup at your house. And then I would get another drive uh, and every once in a while I'll send it to a bank deposit or somewhere off site to your parents' house or something. Um, just, just in case to keep everything safe because uh, hard drive failures do and will at some point happen to you. Now the part of the computers that I think a lot of people get wrong nowadays is with the monitor. When you're editing on a monitor that's not calibrated, it's really hard to be sure if you're setting uh, your colors the way you really want them to look. And some people get really surprised when you edit a photo on your computer and then go look and see what it looks like on someone else's computer or on someone else's Facebook or if you print them out. Um, monitors for photography can get really expensive. Like this is in the thousand dollar range easily. Um, and that's kind of something that people don't expect to pay for when they just you know drop you know six hundred dollars on a camera or something um, so in general if you are looking into getting a monitor for photo editing um, you want to make sure the technology is IPS um, not VA or TN in general an IPS monitor is going to be much better at accurately representing colors um, and if you have the ability to uh, um, try and rent like uh, some type of monitor calibrator um, even uh, less ideal monitors can get decently close for you to start out with um, if you properly calibrate them. Um, and I would never trust a monitor that you just pull up out of the box. Uh, always try and see if you can get it calibrated. Now, your other big piece of the puzzle is going to be software. Um, the most common, the one you probably expect, is Photoshop. Um, and along with that, uh, Adobe Lightroom. Uh, Adobe Lightroom is software that both categorizes and edits your photos. Uh, it's what I use for probably 95% of my photography. Um, I don't really go into Photoshop that often unless I'm doing some specific conversion or particular uh, editing uh, like blemish removal or content aware fill. Um, so outside of those few tools, I usually actually stick into Lightroom because it can do 95% of what you need it to do. Um, nowadays there are a lot of options for software. It used to be it was kind of like Photoshop or GIMP. That was kind of your only two big options. Now that the, there's things like DxO, Luminar, uh, Photo Affinity, uh, a lot of different options. And if you're getting into mobile photography on your phone, uh, there's apps like Snapseed that I really, really like that can help you get into some pretty advanced editing just on your phone. Outside of software, there's a few accessories that you might want to get for your camera too that's going to make your life a whole lot easier when you're starting to learn out in photography. And the first major thing of that is a tripod. Now, there's a, again, like everything else in photography, there's a wide range of budgets for tripods, um, as well as different kinds of weights and sizes. Um, some tripods go up much higher, some of them have different styles of heads, some have pistol grips, some have ball heads. Um, 
And when you're looking into this, uh, you might be tempted to just go pick up a $20 plastic tripod from Walmart or something. Um, in my experience, you are going to go through those until you finally break down and buy a good tripod. <laughs> so it's fine to start out with just a plastic one when you first start, um, but they break pretty quickly, uh, especially when you start getting some serious DSLRs on them or something like that. Uh, it's just inevitable. So if you're trying to look out for a uh, tripod and you want something a little bit cheaper I would at least look into getting something with a ball head. Uh, this is going to be like a ball and socket joint um, And it gives you much more flexibility in turning around the camera versus something where it just does a three-way pan Usually what they call them um, Those are much harder to use and more suited if you're trying to do like video than photography uh, Another essential accessory is going to be extra batteries um, these can also sometimes be kind of expensive, uh, you know, sometimes 20, 30, 40, 50 dollars. Uh, but having an extra one is great in a pinch, especially if you're doing something like a you know birthday or something that you really want to cover and don't want to sit and wait for your batteries to charge for an hour. Um, having an extra charge ready to go is a great way to do it. In the same vein as batteries, you might want some extra memory cards too. Um, it's always a huge bummer to be on your vacation or something, be taking photos, and then realize they don't have enough room to fit all the photos on your memory card um, so having a couple extra are always great one that people don't usually think about too much at first is uh, cleaning supplies so like lens cleaning solution or a microfiber cloth these are handy to keep grimy finger marks off your camera and especially the lens you want to try not to touch the uh, front and lens element of your camera but it sometimes happens uh, so some cleaning gear is great to keep everything in tip top shape and then lastly you're going to want a camera bag to put everything in um, I started out with just a camera bag that came with my camera, it was a little Nikon bag, uh, and then I moved up to like a little Amazon Basics backpack. Uh, now I use a Think Tank Retrospective 40, uh, which has uh, been holding up for years for me. Um, but it was a pretty expensive bag. Uh, I would say look for something that kind of fits everything that you have right now and maybe one extra lens uh, but you don't have to go overboard because you could very quickly fill up a bag to the point where it's not fun to carry around anymore um, so try and be reasonable and don't go out and just buy the biggest bag you can so that should be everything you need to start getting into this course uh, thank you for watching the creative process of photography Hello everyone, just some quick post edit notes. Uh, next video we're planning on talking about uh, different subjects in photography and how you might get into shooting particular things, whether you, that's landscape or sports or nature photography. Um, so we'll be going over that and thank you again so much for uh, listening and watching. Um, and please, please give me some feedback on what you liked about this video, what you didn't like, uh, what kind of things you think I should cover, uh, if I go too fast or too slow. Because uh, again, this is a learning process for me and I'd love to hear what you guys think about it. Uh, thank you so much.